everybody, this is Munson Steed, and welcome to Design and Dialogue, where we connect design and those designers who are creating what we're talking about, what will be talked about, what will be in stores, what will be buildings, but design is essential. And today, Tahiti Spears, how are you? Welcome to Design and Dialogue. Thank you. I'm feeling amazing. How are you? I'm fantastic. You know, uh, congratulations. Thank you so much. You're doing it big. I'm trying every step of the way. Oh, you're not trying. You're showing up. I mean, you know, for all of you who don't know, Tahiti, ladies and gentlemen, introduce yourself to the audience so they know the name of your company and just what your design philosophy is. Okay. Well, everyone, I am Tahiti Spears. My company is 0514 Design. We hone in on anything creative, whether it's branding, logo, web development, um, app curation, wireframing. Um, I've taken heed to even diving into photography as far as being like a set designer and giving like my ideation and ideas and brand strategy and more. So we're one small wheelhouse of everything and we're able, we're able to do everything. I always tell people um, the superpower of 0514 design and myself is I am able to turn people's verbals into visuals. And I think that's something that is very uh, hard, hard on my, my soul that I really believe in because when I see words, I'm like, I can visually see it. And I know a lot of people can't do that. So it's the beauty behind the talent. Boom, <laughs> in the gym from Verbal to visual. It is all about verbal to visual. So congratulations. I, I know you were in a competition. Why don't you share um, your connection to rolling out and what the great news is, because, you know, you've been interviewed by national magazines across the country and you are very special and dear to rolling out as a true designer who deserves respect and to be seen. So um, you showing up in a special way. Tell us about it. Yes, I mean, I got the opportunity, honestly, through you all, but uh, my dear friend, Terrence Pratt, who was on you all's team, basically handed this opportunity in front of me. Um, I was very excited to see it. Me and him have worked together on his personal projects and just projects he has along, you know, over the Chicago area. Um, once it was placed in front of me, I knew exactly what I was capable of doing because I had an idea in my head as far as how can I communicate um, the beauty of being Black, once again, in a visual way, other than just being like verbal. So my take on it was, you know, show our legacy, show our power. And at the end of the day, it ended up turning out me being able to give us um, visual flowers. That's how I, I like to state that I represented the, the collection that has, you know, been placed in so the Walmart. So we it back. You were and have been and have created, ladies and gentlemen, she has created the 2023 <laughs> design for, da -da -da -da. who's that? For Walmart, the Black History Month collection that will be in Walmart. There is three specific shirts that are designed by me and you'll see my name basically on the tag. I got a couple in front of me so you can see the one right here. You know, I am history. I am history. It is just straight to the point because we are, we're making history every step of the way. Um, another one is like affirmations for us, bet on yourself every day. Um, I cannot say this more or I cannot say this less, like just like go for it. And then the final one is um, the legacy starts with me, but doesn't end with me. And we all need to know that we're starting something for generations to, you know, get passed down and to basically be the blueprint of those ideas and whatever it may be. Let's talk about design and, yeah. and even seeing that, I mean, a lot of people could just put words on a t-shirt, but at final design, why don't you walk us through the legacy design so that we know how you took it apart and thought about it in your mind? Just one more time, just so we can see it. Okay. So for the legacy design specifically, this was the idea that I had first presented to Walmart and the line was going to be called a legacy. It was me basically playing off of a lot of our historical people and basically pulling out words that hints at their names. Like the bet on one is from um, Bethune. Like I wanted to play off of their characteristic traits and also give like, once again, a visual context for people to be, you know, related to. I had a Tina Turner one, like she turns heads. See, playing off wordplay and playing off their actions. Um, so 
the legacy one basically came from me building something in COVID, which me and a partner kind of created something called the artisanal consumerism, basically showing that Black people have a dichotomy. We can fit in any room. We can be in any place. And we never really feel uncomfortable. Granted, people may try to make us feel uncomfortable. We fit in regardless. And the great thing about that is that carries on to our genuine bloodline and our legacy and the things that we just forever are giving to the universe. How would you describe the um, moment that you were selected? Because I, I don't want people to imagine that, you know, rolling out pick three. Yeah. Obviously, um, Terrence was part of the, what we consider creative director in, in, in selecting what we thought were some of the most talented young brothers and sisters and, and kudos to the team at Walmart for reaching out to rolling out to really talk about finding some young designers, but you competed to actually do this. So I don't want people to think, oh, we just picked. No, yeah. we actually selected three uh, young brothers and sisters. And really, what was it like when they announced to you that you had been selected? And what has the process been for those who don't know what a design process is once you have actually been selected? Yeah, so as you stated, Terrence had brought the opportunity to me and the um, execution was to present an idea. I know myself, I go over and over and not for farther, you know, than I need to. So I presented my ideas, I rented them on, you know, t-shirts on people just to give them an idea of like, this is for us as in the men, the women, the children from different ranks of life and et cetera. Um, so the presentation was pretty much a Zoom call and I laid out my whole ideation and how I wanted to go about it. As I previously told you, it was me playing off historical people and their characteristics and creating affirmations. It later got shifted through the process, but once I got the email back that I got, I was once again ecstatic. I was very happy, um, overjoyed. It was around my birthday time. So it was like a birthday gift to me as well. Um, and then after that, we went through the process of creating like the entire line. Walmart told me like, you have to create like 10 to 15 options. I went through rendering 10 to 15 different options. We got down to the last three. Um, this was a new process for me because I had to realize that there is like an online server that basically tells you statements and quotes and imagery that you can't use. So I didn't realize that, you know, over here at 2 a.m. at night, drawing pictures of like John Singleton and Tina Turner just to get them push back in my face as far as like we can't use them but we love them so um somehow they rendered it down and we got to the three options which i wanted to make sure that it was something for african americans as well that it was something that the allies can also see as something that can be very supportive uh thanks for that um when you go through what would you suggest a young designer when they're working with the big box brand um how should they approach it? And what did you learn from your own design aesthetic that you'll now be able to use when you are working with other big brands? Um, from, for me personally, working with uh, big and small brands, with specifically big brands, I think you have to show them your value because I mean, they come across people every day. They have people in-house and you know sometimes they do reach out to others, but realize your value at the end of the day. I had to talk to friends who have had partnerships with large companies like Nike and New Balance. And I was like, how do I go about this? Cause I don't want to lowball myself. I want to make sure that I'm getting what I think, you know, is my worth. But also I don't want to go too high where they're just like, well, we'll go with designer number two. Like, no, you pick me because you pick me. But I also want to make sure that I'm somehow winning two times over. I, I got the position and I, I got the cash. Um, so uh, what I had learned was basically break yourself down, break yourself down as far as ideation, your time, you as the person, your deliverables, every bit of the way shows them that, okay, they're worth it. Like I remember when I was doing the process, I was like, well, if you guys want my native files, it's a little bit more extra because when you when they get the native house, they can alter it as much as they want to. Also, when reading the contract, make sure the contract fits within you. They told me that, you know, it's for a year. So when the year is over, they cannot reuse these things or unless, you know, something will be given to me. Make sure you're just taking a careful and a keen eye off of like what they're writing down, what they're saying in emails, and also just ask a ton of questions. There's no such thing as a bad question. As a designer, there's a ton of language we don't know. And lawyers and 
copy will try to just place them on a piece of paper as if we're supposed to understand. So I have friends who are lawyers and I shifted some of those papers to them to say, what does this mean? Am I okay? Is this good? Have friends around you share with people and, um, you know, if your community is very tight and they see you and they value you, they're more than likely just to offer up quick advice. But that is my advice. Make sure you break down your worth because some people don't see it immediately. But also just the process of interacting, timeliness. Mm -hmm. How important was it to understand the design objectives of the client? How do you interpret that? Um, when you're going in and they're giving feedback versus stabbing yourself in the chest? How do you coordinate and, and massage them to be able to create a lens so they can see themselves through your eyes? Exactly. So for me, I always was presenting myself as far as telling them what I was capable of turning around. I was like, well, I could do this in a matter of three days, but also asking them what are their timelines so I can reach the mark, whether if that was for me to finalize the design or the photography that would be on the tag, always ask them up front what's, what's the timeline, because some people will be like, they'll just leave the email, and you're thinking like, oh, I have like two to four weeks to do that. I've learned that as a designer myself. People and friends will send me ideas. And I'm like, that's beautiful, but when do you need it? Oh, I need it tomorrow. Well, that's not feasible. I can't do that for you. But I'll be very transparent enough to offer when I can. And I always tell people, there's always a little bit of wiggle room. Even when the, there is a deadline, there's always like four more extra hours that you could get out of somebody. So just be vocal about that and let them know how you work. Because, you know, sometimes good things do take time. But we have some people who work in a very fast paced environment, which I'm very comfortable working in that type of environment, not saying I love to, but I understand it. The world has to somehow take in ideas and push them out. But when they take time, they come out more beautifully. Um, talk about the tag. Um, did you help design the tag? Um, the, yes. community, the community may have never seen a tag like that. Um, yes. So I even put that out there. I was like, what is the tag like? I was mentioning to them I was like I'm going to do a photo shoot can my face be on it I was like I want people to know who I am so I designed a tag they told me like this tag initially is always on there just to hint that it is a black history collection but I had the opportunity of you know working with my friend who's a photographer my friend who's a copywriter wrote the copy on the back and I am such like a sharing type of girl I made sure to tag myself them my hairstylist everybody I was like everybody who worked with me on this project is going to get their flowers yeah I love it. Uh, I think community and, and is in consciousness is really key to all of our success. Um, at the same way, what is your design philosophy for this collection? If there was a, a philosophy from font treatments, how did you select those fonts when it comes to actually having that together? What, what was your visual idea? Yeah. So when I first presented it, I stuck with my initial design uh, that I presented to uh, Walmart at the beginning. The font was really much a placement on like New York, the start of like graffiti. I wanted to take it back to that like real hip hop type of situation. It was like me pulling from all of our lifestyles and all of our beauty and everything that we have invented. So I think it's a nice representation of, you know, how we mark ourselves or how we show our art because once upon a time you know black artists weren't allowed into like these big galleries the the canvas was the brick wall the canvas was the train and at this point now we were able to transition those into those art galleries and on apparel so when you think of you know when you say from a, a dialogue what conversation starters do you imagine will happen when a person walks through uh, a store or a club or uh, ordering a cappuccino and you want them to know, uh, which is so beautiful, I am history. For that moment, I am history um, is just a beautiful saying in its own. It doesn't have to be I am Black history, I am whatever. I am history, however you perceive me. It's the goals that I have. It's the journey that I'm going through. It's the family that I'm building. All of this is history. The things that I'm teaching myself, the things that I'm teaching others. I want people when they buy this or when people see it on another person, it just hits them in a type of way that it has a very vague um, amount of expression, but that's okay. 
because every day we're building history. Every moment is history. The, something that you did today will be marked down as a moment in time. And at this moment, we are the moment in time. We are starters. We are creators. We are developers. We, we are everything. And that's why I said we are history. It doesn't need to be stated what color, what gender. It's that. I, I, I like the um, saying, I, I love the fact that it incorporates history and um, it makes you wear it. So yeah. now, now you have to be conscious. I thought it was actually when I first heard about it and saw the shirt um, that was shared, I, I literally said, that's a really witty, smart way to say I am proud, but it also seems to derive inspiration for others to really claim your destiny and your position and your worth, to know yeah. that you are worth making history and being a part. Yes, exactly that. So for a young person who you, if you could give a speech at Spelman or Howard or Clark, and you were gonna give a speech about designing their life, what would you encourage them to do in their quest to understand that I am history and you should design your life? I know I would make this probably very short and very simple. I live by a quote every day. It is sincerely chase your dreams because you might just catch one. Dreams are instantly created to become history. And once you catch one, no one can take it from you. And it's just like that. Boom. <laughs> Gym number 100. <laughs> well, I really want to thank you uh, for all that you continue to do to make us proud here at Rolling Out. Congratulations again for your line and collection. The big ups to the Walmart team for uh, their selection and belief in you. And may you continue to manifest your dreams one day at a time one design at a time. I'm Munson Steve for Design and Dialogue. This is Miss, ladies and gentlemen, 2023 designer at Walmart. For all of you, go out, support, and know that we love you, we appreciate you, and we are very, very, very proud of you, and you are our history. Tahiti Spears, Munson Steve, Design and Dialogue. Thanks so much, Tahiti.